Christina Cicuardo, VP of U.S. Capital Global, here with Rob Nance of CityBlock. Hi, Vanessa. Rob, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm the managing partner of CityBlock Capital. CityBlock Capital is an early stage venture fund that invests in capital markets infrastructure and blockchain technology. That's exciting. How'd you get into that? So uh, we really saw the landscape evolving with uh, the creation of Bitcoin about 10 years ago and a move from investing in a lot of uh, what we'll call traditional networks to a global scale network. So when we think of digital assets, we think of a couple things. So one would be cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Uh, the other would be kind of the next iteration of that, which is what some people sometimes call security tokens or just digital assets. And we saw the ability to build this digital asset uh, so that we could solve a lot of the problems with a venture capital asset class. So one of the big problems with venture capital is that your money's locked up for a long time period. And so this gives investors the ability to sell in and out in the secondary market of a security in a seamless way without going back to uh, the original issuer and asking permission and then finding someone in the secondary market. We can actually code all the transfer restrictions right into the data, uh, right into the token itself. Um, and so this is a really interesting area because it's really going to change how our capital markets work. It really seems like the landscape is changing quickly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where do you see it in five years? Yeah, so I think a couple things. The, the first logical step is the capital markets themselves being disrupted. And so as someone that's created a digital asset, that someone that's created a security token, uh, we look at the ecosystem and see that some of the smartest people in finance are building the infrastructure to support this. So our investment thesis really focuses on the in, this infrastructure that's being built, uh, particularly around very traditional investment uh, themes and investment areas. So one would be like brokerage firms and, and creating a smart order router. We invested in a company called Tagomi that does that. Uh, we look at companies that are ac where digital assets are available to retail investors like Coinbase, we're an investor there. We look at data companies. So who's providing these large institutions, family offices with high quality data to make trade decisions. So we invest in a company called Nomics that does that. Uh, when we think of this entire ecosystem, um, you know, we look at who's building this and probably the best example would be our investment backed. And so backed was started by ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, which is the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange. And they're building a futures market, a physically settled futures market for Bitcoin. And that's important because uh, in futures markets, if you uh, have a physically settled uh, future, you actually have to take physical delivery of it. So if it's oil, you have to take delivery of the oil. Uh, in this case, if it's Bitcoin, you have to actually physically take delivery of the Bitcoin. So they're the first people uh, in the US to have a, a legally, uh, uh, an entity that is, that is legal and allowed to do that. So there's been cash settled futures to this point. So we're, we're really looking at these traditional market functions and, and seeing how they can be improved. And that's, that's how we think, that's where we think it's important to invest. Um, so we're really interested in investing in other things that we haven't yet, like exchanges, uh, issuance platforms, uh, people that are writing smart contracts, smart contract auditing. Uh, we think these are really important areas where there's a, a really big opportunity uh, to invest in a really nascent industry, but an industry that also has uh, potential acquirers out there. So we look and say financial institutions are, are excited about this area. We're spending a lot of time and money on it. Uh, but they move too slow to build this, a lot of this technology internally. So we, like, we are investing in people that have left these institutions that are building um, that we believe will be acquired in, in, in a three to five year time frame. All right, Rob, why should I invest in CityBlock? So CityBlock is a pretty unique opportunity in this space. It allows you to get exposure to digital assets, cryptocurrency without taking direct risk. So we don't invest in cryptocurrency. Uh, itself. We don't hold any Bitcoin. We don't hold any other altcoins that exist. Uh, we're just investing in, in the periphery. So um, just like Warren Buffett uh, doesn't buy uh, oil, uh, he, he buys oil pipelines. Uh, he doesn't buy coal, but he buys the railroad tracks and the trains that carry them. That's how we're thinking about this space. So we are buying the pipelines, uh, i.e. exchanges, data, um, issuance platforms um, that that transmit a lot of this data and help this function. So we're not really good at valuing protocols and that's not what we want to be good at. Um, and we don't care what protocol really wins. 
uh, but we wanna take advantage of being able to make money off the transactions that happen in that space. So as you think about institutions moving into the space, they're gonna be buying lots of cryptocurrency. And so why not take advantage and make money off those transactions? So we're only investing in early stage companies uh, in this space uh, that are building, as I mentioned before, this key infrastructure. So it's a way to get exposure to a, a venture capital fund uh, and exposure to the cryptocurrency digital asset space without taking any cryptocurrency risk yourself. Um, and it allows you to do that through a format which almost everyone understands, uh, which is a limited partnership interest in a venture fund. Uh, the only difference is we also have a digital representation of that, and that's in tokens. And those tokens are tied directly to the LP interest, which allows you to buy or sell um, for US investors anytime after a year, for non-US investors anytime uh, after they close the offering. And so as an example, let's say the fund goes two or three X and you say, I wanna take my money off the table or I wanna sell out, there's the ability to do that through secondary exchanges, which we have relationships with, uh, like Shares Post and Open Finance. So Rob, how did you find yourself in this space? Yeah, so I've run a venture fund for a number of years and got ready to start a second venture fund and really saw for the first time the ability to build a venture fund on top of blockchain technology. And that really enables investors to have liquidity uh, after a short period of time instead of the normal eight to 10 years that money's locked up in that asset class. So saw that opportunity, but also saw the opportunity to invest in the infrastructure that's being built to support uh, that entire ecosystem. What is your opinion on the future of blockchain? I think blockchain is really going to revolutionize, revolutionize a lot of areas of our capital markets um, and, and a lot of areas um, adjacent to that as well in technology. But I think the first use case we're really going to see is in capital markets. And I think it's there because it's the really first good use case that exists in the space. So I think if we look at what exists today in traditional capital markets, we're going to see a lot of blockchain based versions of those created. Um, and companies to support uh, the trading of digital assets and digital currencies. So the same way today that an institution routes their orders and their trades using a smart order router, uh, they're gonna want that same technology for digital currencies as more institutions move in the space. So that's how we think about investing in this space is looking at the infrastructure that's being built to support not only retail investors, but institutional investors um, as they start to engage in uh, transactions and buying uh, digital assets. And how are you choosing the companies you're investing in within CityBlock? Yeah, so we, we look at a couple different things. Uh, the first thing we look at is, uh, is this something that is specifically at the intersection of capital markets and infrastructure and blockchain technology? And so that would be things like exchanges, uh, clearing houses, brokerage firms, uh, issuance platforms. And the second is, are they run by experienced entrepreneurs? Are they people that have come from industry that have worked at large financial institutions? And the third is, is the technology there uh, that will allow this to be acquired in a three to five year time frame? I think one of the mistakes people make in venture capital is they often shoot for 10 years, uh, 10, 10, 12 years for an exit to a company. And I think there's a lot of applications of blockchain where that's true, but I think one today where there's a short term solution certainly is capital markets. And we see financial institutions ready to acquire these type of companies. As I mentioned earlier, we see the smartest people leaving those institutions uh, to start their own companies. So we saw Greg Tussar, who was the former head of global electronic trading at Goldman Sachs, leave to start Tagomi. And he left because he saw the opportunity to build this trading infrastructure that exists for traditional markets for digital assets. And so we look for people like that. Uh, we also look, we also, because we look in such a small sector, we look for uh, deals that help us find other deals. So for example, we're an investor in a data company called Nomics. And what that data company showed us was that there were um, a couple of exchanges out there that had good data and some that didn't have good data because they were, Nomics is providing this institutional quality data with order book size to, um, to hedge funds and other people that are trading. And so it allows us to look at exchanges and say, okay, is this a good exchange? Is the volume real? Are there bad actors on it? Um, and that allows us to look at who's buying on this exchange. And so then we can look at a company like Tagomi and say, oh, okay, so we see that uh, you know, these hedge funds are buying. Uh, we can look and say these institutions are investing in the space. So it allows us to understand how the ecosystem really works in a holistic way. Recently, I heard that the president of the ETF store said, if you talk to millennials, 
and ask them which they prefer, Bitcoin or gold, it's a landslide. It's not even close. It's like 90% prefer Bitcoin. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Sure. Well, I think we're moving to a digital asset world. So I think millennials, despite the bad rap that uh, they often get in the press, understand the concept of scarcity. So the only reason that gold has any value at all is because it's really hard to get out of the ground. It's very rare. It takes a lot of energy. And what Bitcoin is, is, is essentially the same thing, right? So there's only 21 million coins that will ever exist. Uh, it's really hard to mine them. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of computing power. And so I think millennials look at this and say, how do I invest in a, a, a hard asset? Uh, one where there's a limited amount, one that could be a hedge against inflation. And we've, we've seen investors in places like Argentina and Venezuela buying Bitcoin. Um, and so I think that's why millennials are attracted to it. Millennials are, are digital natives, grew up with technology their entire lives. So for them, a natural extension of that is going to be something like Bitcoin versus gold. All right. Well, that was wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having me, Vanessa.